High five, VPG Nation. Back for another episode of Dr. Robert's Readerhood. Just finished another session in the office and time to open my mind with a book. Today's shout out goes to all the thinkers and the dreamers and the people who think outside of the box. The book today is this surprisingly small but somewhat complex book called Finite and Infinite Games by James Carse. He's an academic professor, um, or was an academic professor. And in this time period when a lot of our games and contests have been postponed or canceled, and when many of us have picked up a lot of games from home that we used to play or stopped playing, I found this book on my shelf. It was written in 1986. I picked it up in college. Uh, and although there aren't many pages and aren't many words and definitely no pictures, it's probably what I'd call a philosophy book or a thought book. It's not for everybody. It's primarily intended for adults, whether young adults or college students or upper high school students. Um, but it's this professor's take on the games that we play and how games show up in so many areas of our life, not just soccer or chess or checker or video games. Let's take a read. There are at least two kinds of games. One could be called finite, the other infinite. A finite game is played for the purpose of winning, an infinite game for the purpose of continuing the play. If a finite game is to be won by someone, it must come to a definitive end. It will come to an end when someone has won. We know that someone has won the game when all the players have agreed who among them is the winner. No other condition than the agreement of the players is absolutely required in determining who has won the game. Just as it is essential for a finite game to have a definitive ending, it must also have a precise beginning. Therefore, we can speak of finite games as having temporal boundaries, to which, of course, all players must agree. But players must agree to the establishment of space and number boundaries as well. That is, the game must be played within a marked area and with specified players, like on a soccer pitch with 10 field players and a keeper on each side. In one respect, but only one, an infinite game is identical to a finite game. Of infinite players, we can also say that if they play, they play freely. If they must play, they cannot play. Otherwise, infinite and finite play stand in the sharpest possible contrast. Infinite players cannot say when their game began, nor do they care. They do not care for the reason that their game is not bounded by time. Indeed, the only purpose of the game is to prevent it from coming to an end, to keep everyone in play. There are no space or number boundaries to an infinite game. No world is marked with the barriers of infinite play, and there is no question of eligibility since anyone who wishes may play an infinite game. For this reason, it is impossible to say how long an infinite game has been played or even can be played since duration can be measured only externally to which endures. If the rules of a finite game are unique to that game, it is evident that the rules must not change in the course of play. Otherwise, a different game is being played. It is on this point that we find the most critical distinction between finite and infinite play. The rules of an infinite game must change in the course of play. The rules are changed when the players of an infinite game agree that the play is imperiled by a finite income, that is, by the victory of some players and the defeat of others. The rules of an infinite game are changed to prevent anyone from winning the game 
and to bring as many persons as possible into play. This is a thought-provoking book. So if you're a thinker, a dreamer, an outside-the-box thinker, you might find this appealing. It's been around for a while. I'm not going to give you the final answer. You'll have to read it for yourself if you want to find out what is the finite and the, what are the finite games, what, is, what are infinite games, and how many of them are there, and what does this matter to uh, life and to the games we play and to the life we live. I hope all of you are staying healthy, stay safe, and I'll touch base with you soon with another episode of Dr. Robert's Readerhood. Take care, VPG Nation.